so uh, thank you for tuning in today. Um, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a lecturer in the Department of uh, Mathematics and Statistics. And uh, apart from teaching, uh, I'm doing research in uh, statistics uh, with a focus on, uh, on networks. Uh, so yeah, uh, funny that th this was uh, just mentioned. Uh, so networks could be, uh, for example, brain networks uh, where the nodes are neurons and the edges are uh, neural connections or social networks where the, the, the nodes are users and the edges are followings or friendships, uh, depending on what social networks we are looking at. Uh, so of course, these uh, networks uh, will be much bigger than the one shown on the right. Uh, but um, this network is useful for uh, what I'll be introducing. Right, so the question we are asking here is, how do social networks evolve over time? So we know that uh, users will join or leave over time. Uh, and what we're interested here is uh, when new users join the network, uh, what other users uh, will they befriend or follow? Uh, it could be celebrities or politicians uh, or pages or accounts related to uh, their hobbies or interests. Uh, these are uh, slightly tricky to, to quantify uh, in maths, but uh, there is one observation that is easier to be described uh, mathematically. And that is uh, the more popular users are more likely uh, to be followed um, because you are more likely to see their presence on the network. Uh, maybe through somebody's sharing of their post or through the recommendations uh, by the network itself. So uh, researchers uh, such as uh, statisticians, uh, mathematicians and physicists uh, like to describe uh, real life phenomena uh, using uh, mathematical rules. And this is where uh, mathematical models come in. Uh, one thing we usually do is um, we come up with a model uh, based on some simple rules, uh, simulate some data from the model, and then compare the simulations with the actual data. And if they look similar to each other, that means that uh, the model is doing uh, quite a good job. So for networks, uh, there are these two guys, uh, Barabasi and Albert, who came up with this uh, preferential attachment model. Uh, with a few simple rules. First, uh, the nodes uh, join the network sequentially. Uh, second, each new node uh, will bring in approximately the same number of new edges. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, this means if you calculate the average of the new edges uh, of say the first 100 nodes, it will be approximately the same as that for the next 100 nodes and the following 100 nodes and so on. And finally, and most importantly, how likely an existing node gets connected to a new node uh, will depend on how connected they already are. So here I will be using this term degree, uh, which means uh, the number of edges or connections of a node. So uh, these rules uh, seem quite abstract. So I'll give a simple example here uh, using the network of the five nodes uh, we've, so we, we've seen at the beginning. So let's say uh, node F just joined the network and uh, brings in two new edges. So which of the five nodes should it connect to? We'll first calculate the degree of each node. Uh, this, uh, uh, and then we'll divide this uh, by the total, uh, which is 10 here. This will then be the probability of getting connected to F. So you can see that nodes B and D are more connected than the others. So they are more likely to get the new connections. So in order to see uh, what happens next, uh, we'll need to carry out simulations which are actually not quite different to tossing coins for a lot of times, except that they are all done in a computer. So in this simulation, uh, node B will get uh, the first edge. And to decide who gets the second edge, uh, 
we'll cross out uh, B and then recalculate the probabilities. So while the probabilities for all the nodes are bumped up, it's still D who has the highest probability of getting connected. Right, however, in, is, uh, in this simulation is that uh, the uh, node C who gets the second edge. And it's actually not too improbable uh, because this is an event with a probability of two over seven uh, in the first place. So uh, you can see that the process uh, can keep going and new nodes uh, can join the network in the same fashion. Uh, the existing nodes, uh, which now include F, will get connected in the same way as I've described. But the probabilities may change uh, because their degrees uh, will be updated. So I kept growing the network, and this is the evolution uh, when there are over 100 nodes involved. Uh, you can see that the gray lines uh, are the new edges. And the size of a node is proportional to its degree. And you can see that the nodes in the center, which are the, the, the ones that we have seen, uh, you can see that they keep getting bigger and bigger over time. So while it's uh, nice to, to animate uh, the, the, the evolution, uh, we are also interested in the, in the overall properties, uh, uh, the big picture of the network after the simulation. So here I plot the distribution of the degree. So what does it mean? Uh, if you look at the top left point, it means that there are 19 nodes with just one connection. Where if you look at the bottom right point, it means that there is one node with almost 120 connections. Apparently, uh, the, these few points sitting just above uh, the horizontal axis, uh, they are the big, uh, the, the big nodes in the center of the network. And you can see the inequality uh, of the connections among all these nodes. And uh, sometimes it's, uh, there's actually more uh, to be reviewed if we plot the data on a, a logarithmic scale. So this figure is containing the same information, um, but moving the horizontal axis uh, by a constant now means multiplying it, uh, multiplying by the same constant instead of adding it. So you can see that there are uh, quite a few points uh, lying close to this uh, red dashed line, uh, which is actually not apparent in the previous slide. Uh, another thing is, uh, so far we have been uh, looking at one simulation only. Uh, and you can see that there's quite some noise in the data. They are, they are not exactly on this red line. So you might question that if uh, a similar pattern will show up in other simulations. So uh, I went back and ran more simulations uh, with bigger networks. And uh, this is the end result uh, with just eight uh, different simulations. You, you can see that while there are some small differences, uh, um, the big picture stays the same. And this red sloped line applies to the bulk of the points in all the simulations. So now the question is, uh, what's so interesting about this red line? So it turns out that um, this line illustrates what we call the power law. Uh, you might not have heard of it, but it's likely that you have heard of the other terms uh, listed here, uh, such as uh, the rich get richer or the 80-20 rule. So in the context of uh, networks, uh, so it means that as the rich, uh, which means the, the big nodes, uh, as they get richer and bigger, um, the inequality accumulates. And we end up with a small percentage of the nodes receiving most of the edges. And in fact, this is quite consistent with um, 
the phenomena uh, observed in other fields or other kinds of data. Uh, so, for example, um, if you are buying things online, uh, you may want to like read reviews first, right, before purchasing. Those products of good quality uh, will tend to be purchased more, and in turn, they will get uh, more group reviews, and they are e uh, purchased even more and becoming even more popular over time. So you can see that uh, yeah, this power law actually, yeah, or the rich get richer effect actually um, um, applies to networks too. So uh, what's the takeaway here? Uh, first, uh, the big picture stays uh, the same. And uh, regardless of um, initial settings, we will end up observing the power law in the network. However, uh, as the network evolves and changes, there's always an element of chance involved. So uh, which individual nodes uh, will succeed the most may vary. Although uh, usually the earlier nodes uh, have an advantage. Uh, so don't feel uh, too disappointed if you don't have a huge following on Twitter or YouTube. It might just be that you have not been so lucky. And on that note, uh, I would like to thank you for listening. <laughs>